Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be delving into the first seven cards of the Major Arcana, exploring their deep psychological meanings through the framework of Jungian psychology. Carl Jung, a pioneer in the field of analytical psychology, proposed that tarot cards are symbolic representations of the archetypes, universal, primordial images embedded in the collective unconscious of humanity. These archetypes manifest in myths, dreams, and, of course, tarot cards, guiding us through the different phases of personal growth and spiritual awakening. Let's embark on this journey, starting with the card that initiates all journeys, the Fool. The Fool is the first card in the tarot deck, yet it is numbered zero, symbolizing both nothingness and infinite potential. Jung would identify the Fool as the archetype of the pure Eternus, or the Eternal Child. This archetype represents the beginning of the individuation process, the journey towards self-realization. The Fool is depicted as a young man stepping off a cliff, with a small bag of belongings over his shoulder and a dog at his side. He appears carefree, embracing the unknown with childlike innocence. In Jungian terms, the Fool symbolizes the part of us that is willing to venture into the unconscious, to explore the mysteries of the psyche without fear or preconceived notions. The cliff represents the leap of faith into the unknown aspects of the self, while the dog represents instinctual guidance. This card invites us to embrace new beginnings, to trust our intuition, and to remain open to the unexpected. It's a reminder that the path to self-discovery often begins with a willingness to take risks, to step into the void where infinite possibilities exist. The Magician The Magician is the first numbered card in the Major Arcana and embodies the archetype of the trickster or Mercurius. In Jungian psychology, the trickster represents the conscious mind's ability to manipulate reality through thought, communication, and willpower. The magician is depicted standing before a table with the four suits of the tarot wands, cups, swords, and pentacles, symbolizing the elements of earth, air, fire, and water, as well as the tools we have at our disposal in life. The magician's raised hand, holding a wand towards the sky, and his other hand pointing to the earth, indicate his role as a conduit between the spiritual and material realms. In Jungian terms, the magician is the embodiment of the Magus archetype, representing the part of us that can transform our inner visions into external reality. The card urges us to recognize our own power to create and manifest our desires. It reminds us that through focused intention, aligned with both our conscious and unconscious minds, we can shape our destiny. The magician teaches us to harness our inner resources and to use our intellect, emotions, and spiritual insight to bring our goals into fruition. The High Priestess The High Priestess represents the archetype of the anima, the feminine aspect of the psyche, which Jung described as the gateway to the unconscious mind. She sits between two pillars, symbolizing the duality of nature. Light and dark, conscious and unconscious, known and unknown. In her lap, she holds a scroll inscribed with the word Torah, representing hidden knowledge and divine wisdom. The High Priestess is the guardian of the mysteries of the unconscious. She embodies intuition, the inner voice, and the deep wisdom that resides within us all. In Jungian psychology, the anima is the bridge between the conscious mind and the depths of the unconscious. The High Priestess calls us to listen to our inner voice, to trust our instincts, and to explore the rich tapestry of our inner world. She reminds us that true knowledge is not always found in the external world, but within the hidden recesses of the mind. The High Priestess encourages us to meditate, to reflect, and to connect with the symbolic language of dreams and intuition, which can guide us on our path to self-awareness. The Empress. The Empress represents the Great Mother archetype, a symbol of fertility, creation, and nurturing energy. 
she is often depicted surrounded by lush nature, signifying abundance, life-giving forces, and the nurturing aspect of the psyche. The Great Mother archetype is deeply rooted in the collective unconscious, embodying the primal source of life and creativity. In Jungian psychology, the Empress represents the mothering principle within us all, the aspect of the psyche that nurtures, supports, and sustains life. She encourages us to embrace our creative instincts, to care for our emotional and physical well-being, and to nurture our relationships with others. The Empress teaches us the importance of self-love and the need to cultivate a sense of inner abundance. This card also represents the natural cycles of life, reminding us that growth and creativity require patience and care. The Empress invites us to connect with nature, to honour the rhythms of life, and to appreciate the beauty and bounty that surrounds us. The Emperor. The Emperor embodies the archetype of the father, or patriarch, representing authority, structure, and the power of the conscious mind to impose order on the chaos of the world. He sits on a throne, adorned with Ramses' heads, symbolizing strength, willpower, and determination. The Emperor is the counterpart to the Empress, representing the active, directive force in the psyche. In Jungian terms, the Emperor represents the Logos principle, the rational, logical aspect of the psyche that seeks to establish order, discipline, and control. He is the force that helps us set boundaries, create stability, and take responsibility for our actions. The Emperor teaches us the importance of self-discipline, leadership, and the ability to assert our will in the world. However, the Emperor also warns against becoming too rigid or authoritarian. While structure and discipline are necessary, the Emperor reminds us that true power lies in balancing order with compassion and flexibility. The Emperor encourages us to take charge of our lives, to build strong foundations, and to lead with integrity. The Hierophant The Hierophant is the archetype of the wise old man, or teacher, symbolizing spiritual guidance, tradition, and the quest for deeper understanding. He is often depicted as a religious figure, holding a staff with a triple cross, representing the connection between the divine and the mundane. In Jungian psychology, the Hierophant represents the part of the psyche that seeks wisdom, meaning, and connection to something greater than ourselves. He is the custodian of spiritual and cultural traditions, offering guidance on our spiritual journey. The Hierophant reminds us of the importance of learning from the past, of honoring our cultural and spiritual heritage, and of seeking knowledge that transcends the material world. The Hierophant also represents the need for spiritual discipline and the integration of higher principles into our daily lives. He encourages us to seek out mentors, to engage in spiritual practices, and to align ourselves with values that promote growth, harmony, and enlightenment. This card invites us to explore our beliefs, to question what we have been taught, and to discover our own spiritual truths. The Lovers The Lovers card represents the archetype of syzygy, the union of opposites, specifically the integration of the anima, feminine, and animus, masculine, within each individual. In Jungian psychology, the lovers symbolize the process of individuation, where we harmonize the dual aspects of our psyche to achieve wholeness. The lovers are often depicted as a man and woman standing beneath an angel, representing the higher spiritual connection that unites them. This card is not just about romantic love, it is about the choice to align with our true selves, to embrace the dualities within us, and to make decisions that reflect our deepest values and desires. In the context of Jungian psychology, the lovers signify the inner marriage between the conscious and unconscious mind, the integration of our shadow, and the reconciliation of our inner conflicts. The lover's card teaches us that true love begins within. By loving and accepting all parts of ourselves, we can create harmonious relationships with others. This card also highlights the importance of choice and the power of love to transform and heal. 
The chariot. The chariot is the archetype of the hero or warrior, symbolizing the ego's journey to master the challenges of life. In Jungian psychology, the chariot represents the individual's drive to assert control over the inner and outer worlds, to overcome obstacles, and to achieve victory. The chariot is depicted as a strong figure, driving a chariot pulled by two sphinxes, one black and one white, representing the opposing forces of the conscious and unconscious mind. The charioteer holds no reins, relying on sheer willpower to guide the sphinxes, symbolizing the mastery of the self. In Jungian terms, the chariot represents the ego's ability to harness and integrate these opposing forces to achieve a unified direction in life. This card teaches us the importance of self-discipline, determination, and the courage to face our fears and challenges. The chariot is a reminder that true success comes from inner mastery, the ability to control our thoughts, emotions, and impulses to navigate the path of life with confidence and purpose. The chariot also signifies the journey of individuation, where we learn to balance our inner contradictions, to direct our will towards meaningful goals, and to emerge victorious over the trials of life. It is a card of triumph, resilience, and the realization that we are the masters of our destiny. Conclusion The first seven cards of the Major Arcana represent a profound journey through the archetypal forces that shape our psyche. As we move from the fool's innocent beginnings to the chariot's mastery and triumph, we are invited to explore the depths of our unconscious mind, to integrate the dualities within us, and to emerge as whole, self-actualized individuals. Each card is not merely a symbol of external events or circumstances, but a reflection of the inner processes that drive our growth and evolution. Through the lens of Jungian psychology, the tarot becomes a powerful tool for self-exploration, offering insights into the complex interplay between our conscious and unconscious minds. The journey through these archetypes is not linear, but cyclical, as we revisit and re-engage with these energies at different stages of our lives. The fool's leap of faith, the magician's mastery of the elements, the high priestess's deep wisdom, the empress's nurturing creativity, the emperor's structured authority, the hierophant's spiritual guidance, the lover's union of opposites, and the chariot's victorious drive, each represents a vital aspect of our psychological and spiritual development. As you continue to study and work with the tarot, remember that these cards are mirrors of your own psyche. They reflect the archetypal energies at play within you, guiding you on your path to self-discovery and transformation. By engaging with these symbols consciously, you can unlock deeper layers of meaning, gain clarity on your life's challenges, and align yourself with the powerful forces that shape your destiny. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the first seven cards of the Tarot. If you found this exploration insightful, please like, share, and subscribe for more content on Tarot, Jungian psychology, and the path to self-realization. Until next time, may your journey through the Tarot bring you closer to the truth within.